Okay, so I figured I'd do a little video on the new interface. Um, probably by the time you watch this, it'll be 2.2.1. But at the moment, uh, it shows up as 2.2.0. And with this input toggle feature enabled, that's the version I'm going to be looking at right now. Um, notice that there's a configuration wizard now. The first time you've installed this one, you probably see this configuration wizard. And uh, it gives you some... Uh, uh, some setup stuff which is kind of cool um, now you gotta notice that you need to actually tell it if you want to use stream deck with the companions sorry with the use companion with the stream deck software as a plugin normally I just use companion on its own so I don't worry about that I leave it as companion natively I'm not using X keys uh, I'm not using any of this stuff so I leave that unchecked but if you need it there's where you set it and I uh, don't use a password but uh, you can do that if you want. And then it makes no changes because I already did this before. So the big thing is that um, information about if you want to use it as a plug-in to the Stream Deck software, you definitely want to set that. Okay, so I've got nothing. I've got a blank, blank slate. I'm going to add the connections. So in my case, I want to take a look at the new RCP um, module. Uh, my console's at 30. Give it a save, and you get a nice okay if your console is actually connected. So, I'm going to buttons now. So, let's um, um, normally I would do everything with macros, so let's, let's do that like normal. Do a macro here, and um, what's easiest to do is just use the emulator. I could use the Stream Deck, to, but it's easier to show you on the screen if I'm using the emulator. So, I'll click the macro. I'm going to go move channel one now. Okay, so I move channel one, and I've got macro one. I'm going back to the buttons, I'll take a look at macro one. It's got channel one moved, and I moved it down to minus 7.35 dB, shows up as that. Um, what's uh, cool here is this relative function allows you to, instead of just at doing absolutes, you can do relatives. So if I decide I want to um, increase the um, increase the value by 1 dB every time I pressed it. Um, that's what it would do. So as I, as I press the, this button here, you have to just believe me that my uh, fader is going up by 1 dB each time. And uh, I can make it go down by 1 dB by making that negative. So, and again, if I had a video on my console, you'd see it going down by 1 dB. So the absolute and relative makes it really, really handy. But what's really cool is this new function over here, this little dollar sign. So that means that you can switch it to um, variables, so using variables. So if you're not familiar with variables, they are really, really cool. So let's go to the variables section here. And uh, I'm not worried about the custom, the BitFocus companion, they have internal variables, things like what your IP address is, time of day, um, whether your instance is okay, some things like that. Uh, but that's not nearly as interesting as this one, the custom variables. So I'm going to create a custom variable, and I'm going to call it uh, var1, just for, because I have no, uh, no imagination at all. So okay, I've set that up to be um, uh, a value of some sort. So I'm going to say it's 100. Again, we're just going to work with this 1 dB up and down type of thing. You need to set both startup and, and current. So startup is when you first fire up companion. What's the value going to be? Current is what it actually is at, the, at this moment. And the reason there's two separate things is the current can change. You can actually modify this value in many, many ways. Yeah. Um, I can make a button that sets that value to a particular amount. I can calculate a new value. You'll see how that works. Um, so now I want to copy the name of the of the variable, and then when we go to edit the button again, instead of using an actual level, I'm going to hit this button, and it changes to to um, now a variable. So I'll just paste that variable in there, and custom one, internal custom one var one. Now remember this variable, what's it? It's amount. It's it's 100. Okay. So when I if I click it now. Um, I leave it out of relative for the second, and when I um, 
pass it now, it's going to go to 1 dB. Let's see if it does. Yes, it does. It goes to plus 1 dB. And so that works perfectly. If I go relative, um, it will continue to go up 1 dB. So it's taking the value of this custom variable and putting that value in there instead of an absolute value. So why that's really cool is if I create a new button here and I make this button um, change a variable. So, oh, I didn't talk about the browse function here. So the browse function is this new thing that's really cool. If you have a whole bunch of different instances, different modules, each one is listed separately now, so you don't have a giant list of all your modules and all your functions all at once. Now you can pick just the RCP functions, and as you add them, this this thing will stay stay up on on the screen, and you can continue to add different um, functions and then hit done and it's done. So this is way easier than than the way it used to be. Um, so that's a little side thing, but in the meantime, I'm looking to um, add. Oh, and sorry, one other thing is when you do this, this actually gives you your most recently used list, which is really super handy if you're doing a lot of the same functions over and over. So I'm going to browse and going to internal. I want to talk about the, um, there's a whole bunch of different internal functions that you can do, but the one I'm interested in is the modifying variable. So I'm going to look at, so first of all, I can set the custom variable. That's a really simple one. Let's say I want to set the custom variable and uh, pick this one, custom variable var1, which is the only one I have, and I want to set it to 200, let's say. Um, let's make it make minus 200, okay. And in this macro, so this value can be changed. Right now, this value is, if I look at the variable, it's set to 100, meaning every time I press this macro, it's going to go up by 1 dB, 100. Um, but if I press this one here, um, change bar so if I make that one to change the variable it's going to change it change the value of that variable to minus 200 so if I go now to the emulator if I press it now it's going to go up by 100 which it did and I can see that happen if I hit change var plug, plug that now now the variable should be at minus 200 if I click the button now it goes down by 2 dB which it actually is doing. You also just believe me that it is. But what's cool is I can look at the variable now and see what the new value is. So I, when I press that button, it changed the value to minus 200. So that's pretty cool. Now, I'd like to do something a little more elaborate than that. So let's try um, doing something a little different. I want to do a modify the variable with a math conversion. Okay. Um, so, uh, modify variables math conversion. Is that one there with math operation? Okay, I'm done. So taking a look at it here, um, again, what, which variable is it? I gotta find the one. It's gonna be at the very bottom, luckily. Custom variable, var1. Variable plus value. Well, in this case, I'm gonna do multiplication just because I, I know what that's gonna work like. So if I go multiply by minus one and then put that value back into the same variable again, Every time I press this change variable, it's going to multiply whatever the whatever the variable value is by minus one. So it's going to invert it from minus to plus to minus to plus each time I press it. So let's change the name of this to plus minus. Okay. And this is actually a ink deck uh, channel. Um, so now, let's see what the variable's value is. It's minus 200, right? So if I click this button here, and then look at the variable, it's still at minus 200, right? Because I didn't actually click it, sorry. If I click the va variable here, click it, and then look at the value, you see it went to plus 200? Let's watch that again. So if I click it, and now it's gonna change to minus 200. So I'm, my, my function is multiplying the value of that variable by negative one, so it inverts and, and reverts. Most positive and negative. So now if I'm pressing this button here, um, at the moment it's going down, it's going minus. And if I hit this button, it's now gonna go up, 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 up. So that's really friggin' cool. So you can imagine the kind of stuff you can do with uh, internal variables, just to being able to um, have things go up and down by a certain amount or have a, um, a particular function do something different 
depending on other parts of it. Um, so that's kind of an overview of this, and it's I think it's going to be really, really cool. I hope everybody can give it a try, see how it works for them, and uh, play with it a bit. Um, I went through that pretty quickly, so take your time and go back and stop and pause if you need to, ask me questions. But uh, give it a try, please, and let me know if I actually broke anything by, by doing this. Um, very cool. Talk to you later.